Daily Bible Time. Good morning. This is Dominic Steele. Thanks for joining us. And look, we are looking today, Wednesday the 30th of October, at Jeremiah 41. And um, this is a very, well, little known, but very interesting chapter. Um, what we've been through the last couple of days in the book of Jeremiah was where well, we finally saw the eventual fall of Jerusalem and the Babylonians invaded and King, the king was marched off to Babylon eyes plucked out the judgment of God on him for years of ignoring the word of God. The prophet Jeremiah went off and hid essentially in the country under the protection of a guy, Gedaliah, who had been appointed by the king of Babylon to look after, if you like, the lower socioeconomic Jews in rural areas around Jerusalem. Um, he was still in some sort of government, some sort of leadership over these people and there's a little bit of political jockeying going on. The end of chapter uh, 40, and if you're just reading through it, you may not have noticed that this was going to be a big, big thing. But um, Jonanan, the son of Caria, and all the army officers, I'm in chapter 40, verse 13, still in the open country, came to Gedaliah at Mizpah and said to him, Don't you know that Balas, king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, to take your life. Don't you know the Ammonites are plotting with one of your cabinet ministers, one of your deputies, to take your life? But Gedaliah, son of Achim, did not believe him. Then Johanan, son of Caria, said privately to Gedaliah in Mispath, let me go and kill Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and no one will know about it. Why should he take your life and cause all the Jews who are gathered around you to be scattered and the remnant of Judah to perish? But Gedaliah, son of Achim, said to Jananiah, son of Cariah, Don't do such a thing. What you're saying about Ishmael is not true. There is no conspiracy against me, he says. Don't you go taking the life of this guy that's alleged is conspiring against me because there is no conspiracy against me. And that, it turns out, for him, Gedaliah was a fatal mistake. So we get to chapter 40, well, I mean, fatal mistake in terms of his own life. We get to chapter 41, and essentially, Gedalia has lunch with the guy who it's been suggested is going to want to kill you. So in the seventh month, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, who is of royal blood, royal blood is Ishmael, and had been one of the king's officers, he came with the ten men to Gedaliah, son of Hakim, at Mizpah. While they were eating together, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and the ten men who were with him, got up, struck down Gedaliah, son of Achim, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, killing the one whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor over the land. Ishmael also killed all the men of Judah who were there with Gedaliah at Mizpah, as well as the Babylonian soldiers who were there. So, it's a rebellion. I mean, it's terrible. Um, and it, it gets worse. The day after Gedalia's assassination, before anyone knew about it, 80 people come and they're, they're pilgrims. 80 men who'd shaved off their head, torn their clothes, cut themselves from Shechem, um, circumcised, Shiloh and Samaria, bringing grain offerings and incense with them to the house of the Lord. They're on a pilgrimage back to the temple. Ishmael, son of Nathaniah went out from Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he went. Come to Gedaliah, son of Achim, when he went into the city. So he said, he pretended all was fine, brought them in, and then assassinated them, 70 of them. Uh, they went into the city, Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, and the men who were with them slaughtered them, threw them in the cistern. Ten of them said to Ishmael, don't kill us. We have wheat, barley, olive oil, and honey hidden in a field. Please spare our life. Um, and so what did Ishmael do? He made um, captives of all the rest of the people and um, it, 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 tragic, absolutely tragic. Now, let me jump into Philip Ryken's commentary and uh, make a couple of comments. First, Gedalia's death was a tragedy. For years afterwards, the Jews held a fast to lament the day of his passing. It was also, as Ryken notes, an act of terrorism. It took place in high-level talks while the host and the guest ate bread together. It was an act of ruthless depravity. Um, awful. Um, 
the 80 pilgrims who were assassinated were holy men ishmael meets them with crocodile tears um and 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 really you're just in despair for ishmael nothing is sacred hospitality is not sacred divinely appointed leadership is not sacred the worship of god is not sacred even human life is not sacred why did he do it bible gives a hint this is riken he was of the royal family no doubt he was jealous um and yet riken says when ishmael grabs power for himself he becomes a form of an antichrist. He sets himself up against the anointed one. He doesn't wait for God to put him on the throne as David had waited. He didn't wait, follow the way of the cross as Jesus did. He tried to seize the kingdom of God by treachery and force. And I mean, really he's there for us as a negative example. Um, he, Antichrist says Riken is an appropriate time because he actually tries to destroy God's people. He killed their leader with the assassin's knife. Because of his violence, their numbers dwindled and they're enslaved by enemies. Riken reminds us, though, a remnant chosen by grace will always endure. Um, he draws a parallel between the crisis in the American church in these post-Christian times that we suffer the loss of of courageous Christian leadership. And uh, and he draws our attention that uh, Jonathan rescues the remnant of God's people. They rallied to his course. The place where that happens is Gibeon. There are the ruins of the man-made pool there, 82 feet deep. And the pit is a monument to God's grace in preserving a people for himself. Let me pray. Heavenly Father. Wow, well, Lord, we see this adversity this adversity for your appointed leader. This death, this tragedy, this murder, and yet somehow you're still in control, preserving a remnant. And so we pray in these hard times today that you might preserve a remnant. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time today.